Welcome to the Bayhops Group Employee Lifecycle Management Webinar. Today we're going to talk about managing the employee file. My name is Casey Wiggins. I'm a client exec with the Bayhops Group. I'm joined by Dwight Bowman, who is uh, a senior solution architect for Bayhops. Thanks for joining us today and spending uh, part of your busy day with us. Brief uh, review of the agenda. I'd like to introduce the problem, talk a little bit about what the challenge uh, that the human resources department space, um, and uh, then we'll go into a demonstration of the solution followed by questions. As a note, I'd like to mention that the session is being recorded, so please mute your phones. A little bit of background. Uh, the Bayhop Group has been in uh, been providing enterprise content management solutions on top of IBM enterprise content management product for over 17 years. We're a premier business partner, uh, have been a value net partner, and a recent recipient of the Information on Demand Excellence Award. We've got a long history of delivering uh, successful implementations with over 200 projects uh, at 80 companies, and the high return of uh, repeat business with those companies indicates a very, very strong customer satisfaction. We're known for delivering uh, Project on time, under budget, uh, within short cycles. Would like to be able to do the same for you. Today we're here to talk about managing the employee life cycle and talking about the file that is created for each employee relative to all of the documents that are accrued during the term of their employment. Employers need to maintain various different documents for uh, the duration of an employer, uh, employee's tenure with a company, and also for uh, specified retention periods according to various state and federal uh, statutes. In addition, much of this information is considered private or proprietary, and those types of uh, safeguards need to be applied in order to protect uh, both the employee and uh, the employer. For that reason, employers create separate files for personnel information, for payroll information, medical information, and then most recently, uh, I-9 to talk about uh, immigration uh, statutes. And various policies and procedures should be applied very, uh, relative to uh, processes that an employee is uh, involved with from uh, the beginning and the commencement of their employment, such as onboarding, uh, various different things such as business compliance, performance reviews, and ultimately, when the com uh, employee leaves the company, uh, the separation documents, also known as offboarding. We look at the life cycle that an employee follows from the time that they apply for a job till the time they leave. We discover that there are many different events that occur that we need to keep documentation for. Uh, and various different policies apply to those documents. So when a, an employee, uh, a prospective employee, applies for a job in the talent acquisition period, a resume is collected, background checks, uh, interview notes are uh, uh, assembled, uh, and at some point or another a, su uh, a successful hire is made, uh, which commences the employment. Over the period of employment, performances, uh, performance reviews are conducted, promotions potentially, life events such as family uh, events are uh, uh, accrued, which uh, change benefits, selections, uh, and we've talked about the various different things such as uh, separation. Um, each of these events includes various different types of documentation and content that has rules for retention um, and disposition. And so when an employee leaves the company, uh, for a period of time, a company is required to keep those documents before they can dispose of them. This chart indicates the various different events at the top and then the retention guidelines for various events at the bottom. And you'll notice they're different. Some must be uh, included for the entire term of employment. Others for a certain period of time and then can be disposed of periodically. Why does a company keep an employee file? 
They're looking for a single place where they can organize information for easy access, find a way for it uh, to be uh, accessed uh, quickly should the need arise. Things that uh, potentially could be uh, applied there are documentation about personnel actions should uh, an employee come back to the company uh, with a claim. Uh, documentation that def uh, defends why a company, a company may have applied a disciplinary action or a separation. The third reason that an employee's file is maintained is that there are state and federal regulations that are applicable to all of these documentations, and these vary by state to state and, in fact, from industry to industry. Problems that are associated with the employee file is that many of these different documents can be viewed by different people at different times. And the information is accumulated, as we saw in the previous chart, over different times and different kinds of documents. Traditional methods, such as taking paper and scanning that or putting paper into a, a paper file, into a file cabinet, uh, creates significant issues in terms of security, in terms of uh, governance. Uh, some of the documents are corporate records. Some are just important. Some represent good business practice. And unfortunately, some documents find their way into an employee file that really shouldn't be there at all. Each one has its own employee governance policy. It varies by the jurisdiction. So if you live in the state of California, there's one set of rules that is different from the state of North Dakota or the state of Ohio. Most of the information, if not all, is private. It's all sensitive, and there's increased visibility uh, today uh, concerning uh, identity theft um, and this is all information that could be potentially subject to that. Regulatory statutes continue to change, changing the forms and formats and the various rules around maintaining the information about an employee and the kinds of uh, information that's kept. The recent uh, Affordable Care Act is a good example of, uh, of one of those statutes. So there is a, a corporate responsibility for make sure, making sure that all the information is collected, secured, maintained, stored, and ultimately disposed of according to company policies and also federal, statutes, federal and state statutes. This shows a diagram of a traditional flow of information that is customarily used in many companies today. Regardless of the fact that we live in a paperless society, we have created and accumulate more paper today than we have ever before. Frequently, an employee will submit a paper resume, fill out a paper uh, application form, or submit other documents of physical nature. Those are then circulated to various different departments within an organization before they are captured and put into a file cabinet or an electronic file cabinet. However, each of the participants in the review process, whether it's a hiring process or a promotional process, frequently keeps their own copies of those files in their personal filing areas, whether it's on a laptop or in a, a file folder. This creates a significant burden for human resources personnel which are already overburdened. Traditionally, they use manual processes and they are paper intensive. Employee information is scattered in various different locations, whether it's in a manager or a supervisor's location, human resources, payroll, or in the case of many retail organizations, the local stores maintain their own uh, HR organizations in their own their own filing system. So the corporate uh, repository doesn't include all of the information or it includes multiple copies in multiple locations. Today, Gen X and Gen Y employees who have grown up in an electronic age expect easy access to all of the information about them that's maintained in their employee file. And in addition, Employee communications such as business ethics distributions uh, or notifications about uh, benefits changes and the like need to be distributed in a timely fashion consistently and uh, 
in a fashion that can be recorded. The multiplicity of inconsistent regulatory statutes and jurisdictions creates a nightmare of uh, administrative uh, challenges. So the federal government has one set of challenges. Uh, the state and local uh, statutes may apply other rules and constraints. And in fact, by various different industries, uh, there are overriding rules and regulations about what information should be maintained and for how long. In speaking with many human resources managers, we discover that they admit to getting by with uh, an accumulation of various different systems that were really not built for their purposes in terms of managing the employee file. And by and large, it works okay. But when things get out of control, they go horribly bad. An example from June of 2013, a major retailer accepted uh, an order online uh, for some clothing articles, and unfortunately a mix-up in the shipping department sent three boxes of employee files to uh, the daughter of actor Richard Dreyfus. Uh, they included HR information, which included personal information like social security and tax information, resignation letters, medical information, and salary information. Follow-up conversation with the company blamed the mix-up on a human mistake. And it's certainly understandable, human involved with a manual and paper process uh, occasionally uh, results in, in a leak. One might think that it's a, an isolated incident, but six weeks later uh, in Chicago, the nightly news reported that another uh, major retailer uh, had let some documents uh, out of their control during a consolidation sale, liquidation sale of various different pieces of office furniture when uh, a gentleman bought a number of file cabinets um, at a liquidation sale and discovered that they included uh, contents that uh, represented information about former employees, photographic information, marital and personal information, a birth certificate. Um, and this made the nightly news in Chicago. So in addition to uh, the release of this information, a significant issue is that uh, these companies were brought before uh, public scrutiny. Uh, there's damage to uh, the brand. There's damage to the confidence that employees have in security the information that's kept about them. The DayOff Group has created a solution to address this problem uh, by capturing the employee file and managing it through the entire life cycle of the relationship uh, that an employee maintains with an employer. It's built on IBM's industry-leading enterprise content management platforms and consists of two major components. One is built on uh, the robust content management capabilities that includes the ability to scan and digitize paper, extract information off that paper, and ultimately uh, destroy the paper immediately and maintain an electronic record. The information is stored in a proven and secure repository. It's been uh, used by uh, the most uh, regimented uh, industries in the business, including uh, healthcare, financial services, and uh, the government. We provide a very powerful and flexible user interface that provides authorized access to only those people that have the security clearance and the need to know information about that employee at a particular time. There's a foundation for managing how long we keep documents in that, and then there are tools to analyze the information uh, that is contained there. The second piece of this is built on the case management foundation available from IBM, which automates the overall process from the time an employee applies for a job till the time they leave the company and beyond. 
It captures essential documents as results of or artifacts of the process. So during the employee's um, application process, documents such as interview notes uh, are captured at the time of creation, and they're maintained and, and secured locally, eliminating the need to have multiple copies around the organization. It simplifies the exception handling process. So if an organization uh, encounters a situation where some sort of special condition arises, such as the need for a security clearance, we can add that at the time of need as opposed to trying to build that into an overall very complex uh, business uh, process management process. The case management solution also includes uh, collaboration capabilities set up team meetings for team reviews, such as when a performance uh, and a promotion evaluation is conducted, provides the ability to share specific information about that activity, and even records things such as meeting notes or, uh, or conference calls. A complete set of analytics and reporting capabilities is included as part of this component so that if uh, an employer was looking for uh, a, a new person to fill a new position, they could look at all of the information across all of the employee files to find qualified candidates. The solution features a robust data model. It consolidates all of the file management capabilities into one, one area and eliminates the need to have multiple and separate files for purposes such as the personnel, medical file or payroll uh, file, and it separates documents by document type or document class, and that class determines the security um, rules, the access permissions, and how long we keep an individual type of document based on its type. The data model also provides for variability by geographic location so that if there are separate rules for as we mentioned, the state of California versus the state of Ohio, those could be applied um, by the data model and not be left up to the discretion of an HR professional. The solution also provides for the ability to take paper documents, scan them, digitize that information, recognize the types of documents, and extract key pieces of information from the electronic image. At that point, the paper original can be destroyed and there's no longer a security issue. Contact, content analytics can be applied for consistency in classifying the document type and also for indexing. I mentioned the content navigator. This is a powerful new user interface that IBM has released that provides for very familiar, easy to use, and a flexible interface for various types of users, whether it's the employee, the employee's supervisor, or human resources. Case management framework provides standard process components for uh, frequently used processes, such as onboarding, performance reviews, and separations. It also provides components called process stubs for optional components that can be included uh, in a custom process or applied ad hoc or exceptions, things like security clearances or disciplinary reviews. And it also provides for both structured and unstructured collaboration. We talked about previously the analytics and reporting. So in summary, the employee life cycle is a long-standing process. It encompasses a variety of different actions over perhaps many, many years, and various different components need to be need to be accumulated during that time. All of those documents comprise an employee file, and they are brought together and managed as a single entity by Dayhuff Let Employee Lifecycle Management Solution. In that fashion, each participant in the process can participate electronically in a secure fashion, Information is available to them as they need it um, as, and as they are uh, authorized to uh, need that. The information is controlled 
in a centralized location for easy administration, control, and ultimately for disposition. So ELM from the Day Up Group provides a secure and controlled environment which, which simplifies management and administration. It enables self-service. Uh, it facilitates uh, execution of critical processes to ensure consistency across all employees and provides a foundation for uh, retention management and uh, a defensible disposition process. With that, it's time to take a look at the application. I'm going to hand over control to Dwight at this point. Thanks, Casey. As Casey mentioned, there are, are, are two components to uh, two, two major aspects uh, to our employee lifecycle management: the, the content management and the case management. The, the content management, uh, as you said, is really uh, about being able to find the, the employee, find their documents, and uh, um, get at the information that we need to, to, to manage our employees at, at any point in time. There's a, there's a few aspects of, of this component that I, I want to, uh, to, to show. First of all, the, the ability to search for particular employee files. Uh, as Casey mentioned, there are a number of different ways to, to separate an employee file. In one uh, implementation, we saw a before we implemented our employee lifecycle management, we saw the, the company had four physical filing cabinets in their HR departments or four sets of filing cabinets that separated out the content for any employee. So the grievance files were in one, their confidential files were in another, their payroll files were in a third, and their general personnel files were in a, in a fourth. And if they needed to get a picture of that entire employee and see all their, their documents, all their file, they, they really had to literally run around the, the HR department and pull information from the, the four different filing cabinets. What we are able to do by putting things into the, the content management solution here with an IBM Content Navigator is give the HR user or even a department manager, whoever's authorized to see a, an employee file, access to the portion of the file that they need access to. And as an example of that, if we look up a, an employee in a couple different ways here, uh, we'll, we'll see that we can get different sections of the employee files. I've simplified this to where we really only have three sections to our, our personnel uh, or employee folder here. Uh, we have the general personnel file, the, their I-9, and the, the employee confidential information. And so just a, a couple of quick examples here. If I look for my employee ZP3 and, and ask for all their personnel folder information, the, uh, the system returns back to, to me the, uh, the documents that are just in the personnel, unconfidential, not grievance files, the, the general miscellaneous documents, their offers and agreements, their, their payroll forms. Those are all things that are in their, their general personnel file. Conversely, in their confidential file, if I do the same search for that, that same employee here in the, the confidential file, I, I see a, a different set of documents, their I-9, their medical dental form, their resume, other documents that are in, in this scenario considered more confidential. So we don't want a, a, a user that doesn't have access to this to, to be able to, to get to these. In fact, that search would go away, and they'd only have the personnel folder if, the, if that particular user, a, a more junior person in HR or department manager, doesn't have the security access to, to see this information, they would only see that personnel folder search. You notice the I-9 is in here, but there are oftentimes that we're audited for I-9 and, and we need to be able to produce a, a whole list of I-9s so we uh, can uh, separate those out as well and see all 
the I-9s for a group of employees here and so that we can quickly pull those back and not have to, to sort through that confidential file with an auditor working with us. We can just provide a search that gives them access to, uh, to you know, what's the employee that you're looking for, what's the name, what's their employee ID or whatever information you know, go out and look for the I-9 yourself. So basic ability to get to the, the right document at the right time that we need for, for that particular employee is, is one important aspect of our content management solution. But we can go well beyond that, and one of the ways that we go beyond that is, is with this content analytics view that allows us to dig deeper into the, the documents themselves to, to get at information that is really hidden down in the body of the document that helps us service our employees. We can look across all of our documents, having the system read the documents itself and find the concepts that exist in those documents for us. An example of that here it might be that I'm, I'm wanting to find all of the, the employee documents that I have that reference a, a particular uh, HR concern like healthcare. So if I just start typing in healthcare, we see in my small sample of, uh, of documents here that I've got four documents that reference health. I've got two that specifically reference health care benefit plans. And if I select those, I not only see the, the two documents listed, but where in that document there was a concept that re referenced the health care benefit plan. So I, I see those, uh, those phrases that make up the health care benefit plan highlighted for me so I know what, that I've, I've got to the, the right documents that I, I want. And now I've got all, all those ready for, for me to, to open up, take a look at, do whatever work I, I need to with them. I might also use this uh, to identify all the documents about a particular employee. So we've got an employee that we just looked at in the, the previous examples when we were separating out the, the confidential versus personnel files. We've got an employee, Chris Lyons, that has a number of documents that have been sent to us in the, the HR department. But when they were sent to us, they they had been sent from the branch office, sent from the, uh, the retail location, sent from the, uh, the department that uh, Chris works in, in a packet without really any description of the details that are in those. And so we had one of two choices. From an HR department, we would either need to break out that packet and read every document that, that's in it and individually file things away, or take that packet that was sent to us as just miscellaneous files and accept that in so that we've got Chris's documents stored. That's what we chose to do because we let the system find the information that we, we really want to get at in these documents. So I just asked for everything about Chris Lyons, and I found six documents were, were returned to me here. One of them is this miscellaneous document. So What's in that? What are all the details in, in that? Well, all the details are in all these documents are, are represented here. And I've, even though I've only captured the, the packets that were sent to me and didn't, uh, didn't spend HR time uh, re-indexing and restoring the, the documents that were originally gathered out in the, the field, I have access to all the details about all these documents that, uh, that are in here. So if I'm interested in particular in uh, the, their confidentiality agreement, I can select that and it takes me down to the, the two documents that have confidentiality agreement details in, in them. If I, from there, I see, well, what I really want is not the general confidentiality agreement, but I want the agreement to repay, I can, can focus into the one document which included other offers and agreements and a number of, of individual forms associated with it. I, I now am at that one document that, that has my, uh, my agreement to repay as a part of the confidentiality information. So this gives the HR department uh, the ability to get at specific topics within an employee's file without having to spend a lot of time up front identifying every individual page, let the system do the, the work to, to understand those pages and, and identify that for us. Another key concept that's in the, the content management view of 
employee lifecycle management is the collaborative view, the ability to collaborate with various people in the organization about HR issues. So in, in this collaborative example that we're going to look at, we need to hire a new store manager. And so that's a, an HR project. We need to, to gather resumes. We need to get a team of people that are going to, to look at who's the best person for the store manager. And we need a place to store all that information and collaborate on it, make comments and add, add additional documents, et cetera. The, the team spaces in, in IBM Content Navigator give us the ability to easily create the, a, a collaborative workspace, and we'll look at the, the Easton Store Manager requirement, uh, collaborative space that we have here. It gives us a, a place to, to easily share that information where it can be set up by a, a, a department user, not, not something that we need to ask IT to, to set up for us, and control what information we want to, to store it here. So what searches do we want to, to give the users that are trying to find the, the right uh, uh, employee for this, uh, this role? Uh, what searches do we want them to, to use to collaborate on this, uh, this project? Well, we want them to be able to look for the employee folders for internal employees that, that might make that. What kind of documents do we want them to, to store? And we can set up folders for things like the, uh, the candidate files. We've got one candidate file sitting out here waiting for us. We can store position uh, details, such as the description of the, the position itself, and maybe even a map or other web content that's pointing to, uh, to information about this particular store location. We can also keep track of who can be a part of this collaboration, manage. When I set up uh, as a department manager that needs to, to hire a, uh, a, a new store manager here or whatever my collaborative process is, I can say who the owner is, and I'm P8, the owner, then, then who are the members that can also add documents and, and edit documents and manage the, the documents that are a part of this process. And I've got several members. And then who might just be a reviewer that's going to look at content but not, uh, not edit that content? And I can, uh, can add those people as well. This is all done by the, the department user that needs to, to create this collaborative workspace, and then we've got a place for everybody to, to work on the, this content together. So those are, are just three of, of many features of the, uh, the content management aspect of, of enter, uh, employee lifecycle management, the ability to search for the particular folders that, that uh, relate to our employee documents that we care about at this time, the ability to, to search uh, across everything that's within the body, the, you know, find content or concepts that are in the body of our, our documents, and collaborate with each other on, on the employee documents. Beyond uh, that, in, in content view of our employee documents, we, we also have the, the case management view. And the case management view takes us uh, steps further to, to actually give our HR department the ability to, to process the life cycle of an employee from the from the beginning when they initially are onboarded through the the various actions that need to happen with an employee during their uh, their life cycle ultimately offboarding them when they they leave the, the company what we're looking at here is the uh, the HR view of their in basket of work that they need to to take action on, and so our HR user is seeing the that they've got four employee actions that they need to take action that they need to do some work on. They've got mm, uh, three HR reviews, which is a part of the onboarding process, and then there's one issue that IT sent back to us. I can see from the fact that it was an IT onboarding is who sent us to, to resolve this issue. And so based on the, the, the subject I, or based on the, the, the description of what I need to do, I can sort this and, and select which one I need to, to work on first, make the, the right priority uh, so that I can go in and, and, and work on whichever employee I need to at this time. 
I kind of get it ahead of myself, though, if I if I do work as a, a HR user because the the onboarding process would start with the employee. So let's take a look at the employee first. In the employee view here, the employee's got a, a bit different view because they are, you know, they're new to the company when they're being onboarded. They need a bit more instruction when we send them the, the link to this page. So we, we give them the, the instructions that and that can be customized for, for your particular HR purposes or for your company to, to say exactly what you want the, the employee to, to know and, and do at this point. But in, in fact, what all these words here are simply saying is, is select the onboarding info button that we've highlighted here below to, uh, to take a look at uh, and, and onboard, and fill out the forms that you need to, uh, to onboard yourself as an employee. The other thing that, that we presented on this screen is just a sample of your employee portal that would give that, this employee access to, to look at other um, you know, healthcare information, uh, their careers homepage, whatever things are really on your HR portal were, would be put into to this frame of the, uh, the user interface, uh, and we're just showing an example of that here. So an employee comes here, they, you know, they see that they've got this one task that they, they need to, to, uh, to complete, and so they, uh, they select that and come in and, and take a, a, a look at what they need to do to, to fill out all those forms to, uh, to find themselves a, as an employee. It, the, again, they get more detailed instructions uh, of what they need to do here. Their offer packet that was sent to them is, uh, is available to them here that they can uh, select that and, and view the, the actual offer packet that, that was sent to them as a, a part of, the, of filling out this, uh, this onboarding form. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that right now because I want to focus on the, the details that I need to, to fill out before I, I read the rest of my packet there. And I've got uh, all the, the name and address information that I would typically need to fill out. My, my manager that made me the offer knew my, my city and my, my state, but didn't, um, didn't put in my street address, so I'm going to um, add that here. And so, um, what country? Well, I'm, I, I'm uh, from the U.S. I'm going to put that information in, and, and that, that's everything I need to about that, that page. I, uh, I may add my, my name tag that I like to be called Russ. And, um, and add emergency contact information where I could add one or many people that are, are, are my emergency contacts. So uh, put in Mary Klein uh, as my emergency contact and her phone number. And she's my wife, so I, I fill out the, those details. I could add additional, but I'll just go on from here. At this point, I, I fill out some other general details, uh, 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 mark down that I'm married, and then I get to the I-9 eligibility um, form here that, as, as you see, is already filled out with the information that was, was on the previous screen. So my job is uh, to fill this out is, is much easier than it would be if I was just sent a, a paper I-9 or, or a separate form. I, I'm now just going to, to fill out the details that, I, that aren't completed already, and that's really just saying that I'm a citizen of the United States. If I need more details, uh, the actual link to the, uh, the I-9 instructions is, is provided down here at the, the bottom of the, the page that I can, can scroll down and, and read more details to, if I have any question about how to fill that I-9 out. At this point, I'm satisfied with, uh, with everything that I've entered uh, about onboarding. I, uh, we, we did say uh, that we had that, that onboarding, or that offer packet that was presented to us. I, I put that to the side a moment ago, but yeah, we might want to take a look at that, and we've got the ability to, to zoom in and, and out of the, these documents that were presented to, uh, to us here and, and do whatever action we need to with that. My, I'm probably just going to read it and accept it and, and go on. And I've done my job to, uh, to really by just filling out a couple fields, my, that, that are unique to me as an employee. I've, I've filled out my onboarding information and my job is done. I don't have any other tasks to, to, to work here. So that employee work 
and would then go on through the, the additional business processes the, to onboard that employee. And the next step is uh, it would need to go to the, the department manager. And so our department manager comes in, and they've got a number of new employees they're, they're hiring, and Russell is, is one of them. They can bring up Russ's onboarding information and see much of the same information that, that Russ did, but we'll see a, a little bit additional information here as the, uh, the department manager. We see the employee ID. We also see the status of the, the onboarding that, uh, at this point. We can look at what tasks have been created to, uh, to work with Russ. Anytime that we, uh, we onboard an employee, eventually the employee is going to either retire or, or leave uh, in some way. And so we can manage the entire life cycle of the employee. And so at any point, we, we've got the ability to offboard the employee. We're working on onboarding them right now. There are other tasks that, depending on who the employee is, we may need to kick off, like a background check or a DMV verification. We may select based on something we know about them to, to kick off a, a credit check or, or a drug check. We might even have other actions that these would typically happen on down the line after onboarding, but we may have other actions that we, we may need to, to create a, a task for. The reason I show you all these is because all of these tasks can be, uh, can be grouped together to manage this one employee as a, a case for the life cycle of their employee. So with the, from this onboarding work that we're, we're doing here with Russell through the life and all of those actions that may need to happen can be uh, managed together and, and, and we can see everything we need to about the employee at any point. So right now, none of these additional tasks that have happened, but I, as the, the manager, I need to, to, to fill out some details about this employee. This employee is going to be a driver for us, and I'm going to mark down that, that, uh, that I'm the, the employee's manager, and uh, that's really all I need to, to fill out at this point, and, and so I'm going to go ahead and approve this, uh, this onboarding for this employee. I could escalate this to the HR manager if I've got questions, or if I've got questions for the employee, I could route it back to them and request more information. When I do that, I might add a comment that goes on, along with that, and if I was going to send it back to the employee, I might, I, I might say, uh, what about some, some question? Since I'm just going to approve this, I'm going to say, this is a great guy, and, and add that as a, a comment so that the next step the, the HR department knows he's a great guy. So I'll go ahead and approve this as the, uh, the department manager goes out of my, uh, my work basket. At this point, some things behind the scenes happen for us. The, the, the system takes a look at the I-9 information, and depending on where the employee's from, he's from Ohio, and so we can do an E-Verify, and it goes off and does the E-Verify check. If he's from a state that E-Verify is not allowed, uh, then it would not do the E-Verify. And, our, and ultimately, our, um, our HR manager get, or HR department gets the, uh, the work, and when they can come in and take a look at that same employee being onboarded, they, uh, they have uh, all the details that has happened from the employee, from the department manager, and that I-9 uh, process. Uh, has, has all been presented to them. So they see a very similar screen that our, to what our department manager did, but they, in this case, they now know that the employee has had their I-9 approved. The E-Verify was successful. We're ready to continue onboarding them. They can take a look at the, the history of what's happened with empo this employee, and they, they see that our department manager has and said that this is uh, this is a great guy, and they see something new that's happened here that the uh, the DMV verification task has has started and completed, and so we know that this employee is somebody that had to have a, a DMV verification. That actually happened because our manager back here put in that our employee was a driver. So all these automated processes can go on in the the, the background as we're we're onboarding our employee. Our HR user likes everything they see about this employee. They may um, uh, escalate this to their, uh, their HR manager if they need to. If they don't like it, they may reject it. But as I said, they like it, so they're going to go ahead and, uh, and approve this. 
At this point, it would go on through the rest of the uh, the process, which in, in the simple uh, um, template for HR onboarding goes on to the the, uh, the IT processes where we assign a uh, the a user uh, de uh, IT details such as the uh, the the user employee gets a um, a username for the the network and, and a, um, a uh, other details that they 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 need, such as an email address, et cetera. So now uh, Russell's sitting here for uh, waiting for uh, for IT to to take action on them. A lot of the IT action would actually be very automated, that we wouldn't need an IT person to see a user interface and take individual manual action on them. But I I bring all my my work to a, a manual step just so that if we go on through more details of the demo, we could always um, see where things are, are happening. So in this case, Russell has come to, to IT, and when we take a look at the, uh, the same onboarding case for, for our employee Russell here, uh, the, the main things that, that we see is uh, IT doesn't need to have all the same information that our uh, HR department and our department manager does. So some of the details like their dependents or, and their emergency contact isn't an IT requirement for them to see, so we don't show that to them. But what we do see is their employee email has been, been added to, to this case here. IT has a number of steps that they, that they can, uh, can process as well. I'll just go ahead and, and complete this to, to complete the onboarding of our, uh, of our employee. So that is just a, a simple example of the, uh, the, the case management aspect of our employee lifecycle management. Uh, as, as Casey and I mentioned, there are the, the two components. They actually work tightly to, uh, together. I can still get to, uh, to searches and the advanced searches. I can still create team spaces associated with cases while I'm, uh, I'm working on a, uh, associated with employees while I'm working on a, a case. So I've got the ability to do all this from one view, or we can can implement one part without the other, depending on what your uh, your employee lifecycle management requirements are. Yeah, that, that was a that was a very good uh, uh, and a concise uh, representation of some of the highlights of the uh, employee lifecycle management uh, framework, and, and particularly uh, the onboarding component of that. I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to look at the Day Health Group website. The session is going to be re recorded and is displayed there. Um, in addition, other collateral, there's a white paper that talks about this topic and, and uh, a summary sheet that describes the solution and the various components that are included. If you've got additional questions and would like additional information, please contact the Day Health Group. Uh, Stephanie Coates is the Director of Sales and Marketing. She can be reached at uh, scoates at dayhelpgroup.com. My email is there as well, and the phone number is represented. Uh, again, thank you very much for joining us today, and have a good day.